and welcome to The Lens at 177. On this show, we are speaking to a very remarkable woman uh, with Fijian links who is from New Zealand, uh, Nina Nawalwalo. Bula Nina. Oh, Bula Naka. Yes, yeah. thank you for agreeing to come on our show. Um, we're so privileged to have you on it. I'm um, just going to read through some of the um, background that uh, Nina has. Uh, she's the artistic director and co-founder of a renowned New Zealand theatre company, The Conch. She's presented at more than 40 international festivals from London to Moscow and everywhere else in between. Um, your show, Vula, um, you know, ran for seven years mm. and did a three-week stint at the Opera House. Mm. So, you know, she's been places. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and you've had sold-out shows at uh, London's Barbican Centre mm. as well. Mm. You know, that must have been an mm. amazing thing. So, mm. just tell us a bit about yourself, you know, your background, your Fijian links. Oh, well, firstly, um, it's such a privilege to um, have this opportunity to come to Fiji. Mm. And it's my honour to be here. Um, and um, my links to Fiji is that my late father, Ratanoa Nawalawalo, he came to New Zealand in the 1950s, and um, and he came to Victoria University. Right. And he met my mother, who was from England, and they met at the Wellington Chess Club. And um, and my father was the first uh, lawyer and barrister who was um, at Victoria to. To, um, graduate yes. and um, and he committed a lot of his life to um, the Pacific people coming into New Zealand um, yeah. overstaying and all the and scrub cutters that used to come and right. all of the all of that early early work when Pacific immigrants you know came yes. into New Zealand um, and of course he hails from Tabuki yeah. and um, and he you know like a lot of the amazing men went to QBS and so it's always um, been something that's so deep in our heart, right. myself and my brother and sister, yes. to have the opportunity to come to Fiji and um, mm. and of course with my work and all of us, we all look for things that are our identity and right. we think, well, what stories do we tell or what do we think is the way to um, find the light in a sense and so being half Fijian, um, mm. it's just natural that I look into to my own um, traditional links and right. so I love um, collaboration in that sense yes. um, and uh, looking at Pacific storytelling because we all have um, our own point of view and the potential to take our stories into the world right. and so um, yeah that's just a little bit about um, you know my body of work but yes. I love working with Pacific artists, musicians, right. actors and drawing out um, the stories that need to be told right. and sometimes those stories are the hard stories yes, yeah. or the hidden theme, things yeah. that are you know tricky to talk about so um, it's a real privilege to bring the film here right. um, at this time. Right. Yeah. Yes, uh, so you're here to um, screen your film A Boy Called Piano? Yes. Unusual name? Yes. Uh, could you just tell us a bit about the, the Sure, movie? sure. Well, it's, um, it's the story of Fatmoana John Luafutu, right. who is a Samoan man who yeah. came to New Zealand as a child in the 1950s, like a lot of early Pacific families that came in. Yeah. And it's a story of his life. And, you know, there are many sorts of stories that we tell in this world. A lot of them have wonderful, successful things. Yes. But there are many other stories um, of things that don't always work out for children and right. young people and so he was taken into state care right. um, and like a lot of Māori and Pacific children um, and he was in state care as a child and then a lot of um, those young people, these are the formations of the gangs right. and prison time and so he went through a big life of um, in a way of all of those things and then he, which you'll see in the film, right. and then he was working in the library in the prison and he found Albert Wentz book Sons for the Return Home yes. and of course Albert Went we know contributed so much yes. to Fiji and as a writer and um, and they started and he wrote to him and they started right. writing to each other and he encouraged Fatmoana to write 
and so he wrote a book right. in prison and he was how do I change and how do I go forward and this was the way he was able to you know through writing yes. and through taking your feelings and placing them out there and having courage right. um, and so that book was something that we turned into a play okay. and then in COVID you know you can't tour right. so we put it into a radio play <laughs> yes. and then we got the opportunity to put it into a documentary right. and so it's very courageous because yeah. it's a, f a father his son and his grandson yeah. and I think you find with many many families uh, where they have these things happen mm -hmm. and things can go off course a little bit yeah. ha how you can find your way out or it's it's a film about healing, healing and yeah. the power of healing yeah. and the power of I suppose one would say he's the voice for the voiceless yes. um, the men that may be inside prisons right. and and um, they don't always get to speak about yeah. their feelings yes, so yeah. it's very very brave yes. as a Pacific Island man right. and he's the um, he's the first Pacific Islander we have the Royal Commission inquiry right. which is looking at um, state care and all of the things that oh, okay. happen right. and he is the first Pacific Islander to go on the stand yes. so in inside the documentary you have moments where we go into the courtroom right. and there he is telling his story and then we've filmed um, in different ways right. and so it's um, it's a real privilege for myself um, to work with courageous people right. and um, and very specifically I have a women's team around I had a woman cinematographer right. a woman editor because mm -hmm. you know for us as women yes. we our natural thing is to take care of our Pacific men and how we yes. care for for that in a way right. yeah yes. Um, Nina, you very um, uh, from my, the research I've done, you're very passionate about bringing those untold stories to you know to the forefront, and also about uh, using theatre as a vehicle to affect some kind of social change. Yes. And one example, and I, mm. I, I really commend you for this, mm. is uh, the Samoan National Island National Women's Theatre Company. Uh, you know, uh, which you set up to address um, violence against women and girls, which is mm. a big issue in Fiji. Yes. We have one yes. of the highest uh, yes. incidents. So do you consider mm. yourself a bit of an activist in that sense? I think so. I think that um, by being Pacific and telling stories, um, we are political just by doing that. Right. Um, but I think um, it was the Solomon Islands yes. and um, setting up uh, the National Theatre and having the opportunity to look at the themes of gender-based violence. That's very taboo. Yes. And, um, you know, one has to think, how do you put something on stage where you ask people right. to look at it? So it was very delicate process um, and um, we went in and out of Honiara and made like in the beginning we made 15 minutes and then we, the community watched it and then we went back to New Zealand and then we come back again and do a right. bit more and we made in the end about 40 minutes, 45 right. minutes and um, and I suppose yeah you have to listen very carefully to um, the audience. Yes. Um, I did some things with silhouettes so like right. you've got shadow like you're looking into a house yes. and you might see so and then I could do a little bit of sort of maybe something that might be violent right. but you're not seeing it directly right. um, I use music a lot of specific music and right. I, I use traditional imagery as well and right. um, and look I'm so proud that we went to the Melanesian Arts Festival yes. and um, and they went to the EU they went to Brussels yes, to the right. Parliament yeah. and um, and then we actually came to Fiji and we put it into a Fijian context um, called Valuing Voices right. and um, and we took it to, you know, we played it in Suba and we took it to the villages, some different villages. Yes. What was the response like? It was very village? good. It was really, I mean, it's really very, very, um, you've got to be very, very careful right. um, how you discuss these kind of themes, don't right. you? And, yes. and you don't put blame, oh, we just blame no, men. No, because no. if you start going, oh, we just do that, then um, then you're shutting down the whole 
the whole themes of it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we had to do it quite um, yeah, carefully, so and it. yeah, and um, and how we used music and that yeah. sort of thing. But I didn't sh in the beginning. I worked, and it's quite strong. And then you have to look for a positive, positive outcomes, don't right. you? With everything, yes. Yes. it's all about hope, isn't it? Yes. Everything that we do, we yeah. think if we don't look at the darkness, we won't find the light. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, mm. You know, it's just unfortunate. Uh, I'm just going to share mm. some stats with you. Mm. So Fiji has some of the highest rates of violence against women in the world. Mm. Two in three women have experienced some form of uh, physical sexual violence uh, in their lifetime from their intimate male partner. Mm -hmm. um, do you see yourself maybe um, establishing some, something similar to the Solomon Islands theatre company in Fiji to maybe address it in a deeper, in a deeper way? Of course, I would love to collaborate at any opportunity yes. with um, Fijian women. Right. And I think um, what is so key is that they bring their own stories out right. and, um, and they bring those to the surface. Um, and I would love to, um, to work in that way and contribute my skills. I think mm. it's about how you craft something, yes. how you make something, similar to the boy called Piano, mm. how you put something together that um, is also got, but it has to be poetic. Yes. It has to have, um, like in the film, we um, I use a lot of things with the ocean. Right. I use the wind. I use things that when people are in incarcerated right. and pr they can't feel these things. Yes. What are the things that we miss uh, as children? And right. um, and then I put that alongside the concrete and the prison thing, and yes. because we have to remind the audience that we're talking about children and young people yes. and not just think oh we judge you and your life is over right. we have to think how do we how do we bring these themes to the table yes um, so um, so you know I think that um, having a film is so wonderful it's been really wonderful because you don't know where it will go and who right. it will connect with and Pacific people love watching movies that's right that's <laughs> right and seeing themselves and seeing themselves then you believe if I if I can see myself on screen I believe my story is relevant Right. And I think that's really important. Yes. And I think there's amazing young filmmakers here and so mm. much talent and, and just that thing of telling your own story. Right. Um, and so, you know, taking it to, we got invited to Finland, right. got invited to, we've been to Australia and all these different spaces which are indigenous um, spaces. Yes. And of course, their story is our story and, um, and you get educated from making something because right. you take it out there and then you it reveals more about the world itself in a way yes you know yes. yeah can, can you mm. share a bit about your work with uh, Master Lai Vekoso mm. and, and Masi mm. could you share a bit about that absolutely as well? well you know of course Master Lai Vekoso is so renowned yes. and um, and I got commissioned to make a piece of work in 2012 for the New Zealand Festival of the Arts on and I thought oh I wanted to make it about my peers and memory and right. so um, I thought oh, I'll come to Fiji and look into Masi itself which is like looking into history yes. and so I went to Batulele and the mm. wonderful women there made me a whole Masi set and everything yes. and then Master Lai I came and auditioned right. and was looking for um, some Meki dancers of course Master Lai's group was so renowned yes. and um, so we cast six of them and and they came to New Zealand and worked with us right. and um, and then we performed in Wellington at Te Papa at the museum there right. and then we came to Suva and um, and put it in front of the Fijian public right. and then took it to Sydney yes. and so that was a beautiful journey because right. of course it's an exchange you know for yes. me to learn about my Fijian culture right. in a deeper way being brought up in New Zealand and then for all of the Fijian uh, artists to get skills in theatre making and right. get international platform. Yes. And um, and the you know the New Zealand.
Zealand Fijian community, you know, loved loved it. And the Sydney, you know, there's Fijians everywhere. Yeah, we all, we all are all everywhere. We all over hey? the world, no? <laughs> and so that's part of it. Yeah. You know, you can take the work, and you have yeah. all of these fantastic communities backing it up. Yeah. Sorry. Um, that's all right. I'm just going to move into the final segment. Sure. Um, music is such a huge influencer for Pacific people. And I noted that uh, you had a show called The White Guitar. Yes. About the uh, Lua Futu family. Yes. And uh, the youngest son is a well-known rapper called Scribe. Yes. So, you know, that show was a sellout. Mm. Uh, would you look at something similar with a Fijian artist, maybe? Totally. Yes. Come on. Who, I'm, we're right there. Right. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that, the Lua Futu family is Fat Moana. Of course, right. it's the film about him. Yes. But um, the white guitar is, of course, the son, Matthias, who was yes. a, who's a very renowned New Zealand actor. Right. Who's in films. And mm. and, um, and then his brother, Marlo, who's scribe. Yes. And so um, it was the father and the two sons. And it, was, um, it started from the 50s and coming into New Zealand and then it went right through to the Christchurch earthquake. Yes. It's like a family generational story um, about redemption, yes. about the power of music. Right. Um, and of course, having Scribe in it and his breakthrough, renowned work. Right. Um, and it doesn't step away from the harshness and the realities and, yes. and where music comes from. And sometimes right. the darkest things, isn't it? And yes. we need the music or we need that voice. Yes. Um, and of course, Fat Moana is an amazing uh, musician himself. Yes, he is. And the white guitar is the grandmother's guitar that came from American Samoa right. and got brought to Apia. And so we called it the white, white guitar. guitar. And um, and then Tupe Lua Lua, who was, uh, played the grandmother. So the boy called Piano came from the white guitar right. and then came to this, you know. And, mm. and so it's a big trust, isn't it? Yes. Working with the family and taking care, right. but also so um, being able to address a lot of themes of a country or of the global conversations that we have to have. So absolutely, okay. I am right there with well, any Fijian. All, all we'll do Fijian, a, we'll have a chat afterwards. All the Fijian artists, yeah. you, you know who to get in touch with. Yeah, great, with, absolutely. Uh, when, when will a uh, boy called Piano be um, screened? Tomorrow, right. two o'clock, yes. USP, USP, ICT right. theatre, right. free. Free, they free, and not only that. Afterwards, um, the New Zealand High Commissioner yes. and myself will be having a talanoa, okay. talking about the themes, and then there's a wonderful spread of food okay. and all of that for all of the community. So you know, we would just love um, everybody to come and share in this work. Yeah. So tomorrow, 2 p.m. Mm. at the uh, ICT Theatre mm. at USP. Mm. You can't miss this. You've got to be there. Thank You've you. Got to be Innocence. We all begin in innocence. The first time I heard the sound of the piano, I was still in the womb. My mother was carrying me. Piano was her first love. I never saw her play, but I heard it. The sound of the piano. They took that innocence. The baby you bury deep inside is a hurt baby. And sometimes, when you find yourself in situations, you wake the baby up and it starts to scream. Hey, tangi, anako. <laughs> 